Welcome back to Madman Review. If you're among those who appreciate the idea of a PDW and find it frustrating that H&K refuses to offer a civilian-friendly version of their highly sought-after MP7, you can give them the middle finger by acquiring a Ruger LC charger. Who knows? Maybe it'll push them to make a semi-automatic variant of the MP7. Then again, maybe not. But what exactly is the Ruger LC charger and why bother with it? To answer those questions, we need to take a quick trip down memory lane. During the 1980s, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, a.k.a. NATO, sought a replacement for the 9x19 Parabellum due to its deficiencies. Its ballistics were poor and it could not effectively penetrate body armor. Colt created a 22 caliber cartridge known as the 556x30 Mars, which was essentially a shortened 223 REM cartridge. Although patented, this concept remained limited to a few prototypes. In the early 1990s, FN Herstal developed the 5.7 by 28 mm, which, in many aspects, surpassed the 9 mm and was intended to replace it. However, the Germans rejected this option and instead introduced their own 4.6 by 30 mm cartridge. To make a long story short, even though these two cartridges have virtually the same ballistic performance, the 5.7 by 28 mm slightly outperforms the 4.6 by 30 mm. The 5.7 by 28 mm was intended for adoption by NATO, but the Germans declined to embrace it. Initially, both cartridges were relatively unknown and didn't generate much interest until the television show Stargate introduced the P90 and the concept of personal defense weapons to a wider audience. Subsequently, Americans became aware of the 4.6 by 30 mm cartridge. However, if you're familiar with H&K, you'll know that their primary market has always been military and law enforcement, showing little concern for civilians. Even today, there is no semi-automatic version of their military PDW, the MP7, chambered in 4.6 by 30 mm. CMMG addressed this by launching the 4.6, a firearm chambered in 4.6 by 30 mm, as we discussed in a previous video. The CMMG 4.6 is the closest we can get to the MP7, but there's a bit of a problem with it. It's an AR, not a PDW. However, everything changed when Ruger introduced their LC charger a few short weeks ago. It's not chambered in 4.6 by 30 mm as it is only available in 5.7 by 28 mm. But the chambering isn't exactly a concern because, again, the two cartridges offer similar ballistics. The 4.6 by 30 mm thinner case dimensions may allow for higher magazine capacities in firearms chambered for it, but the 5.7 by 28 mm exhibits slightly better terminal performance, as mentioned previously. In the end, the cartridges are even. Okay, now that we're done with all the boring history bits, let's check out the Ruger LC charger's dimensions and features. Specs the Ruger LC Charger is a large format pistol that combines the power and precision of the 5.7 by 28 mm with the versatility of a carbine in pistol configuration. Chambered in the 5.7 by 28 mm cartridge, it's designed primarily as a PDW for civilians. With a high magazine capacity of 20 rounds, the LC Charger ensures that you are well equipped for various shooting scenarios. It has a 10.3-inch nitride-treated steel barrel. This barrel doesn't only have exceptional strength and longevity, it is also highly accurate. Additionally, its threaded muzzle with a 1.5-inch by 28 thread pattern allows for the attachment of different muzzle accessories, such as a suppressor or a muzzle brake. Weighing approximately 66.5 ounces and measuring 16 inches in overall length, the LC Charger is a sizable firearm. However, Ruger has managed to balance its size with ergonomic considerations. The aluminum alloy receiver is both lightweight and durable, featuring a Type 3 hard coat anodized finish for maximum resilience. While the pistol does not come with sights, it compensates with a full-length Picatinny rail on top, which enables easy installation of optics, ensuring quick target acquisition and improved accuracy. Features The LC Charger boasts ambidextrous controls, including a manual safety, a reversible charging handle, an ergonomic bolt release, 
and an extended magazine release latch. Ruger's secure action fire control system, with its internal hammer and bladed safety trigger, provides a secure and reliable shooting experience. The trigger offers a short, smooth pull, a clean break, and a positive reset. The pistol's CNC-milled handguard features M-lock accessory attachment slots, granting users the freedom to customize their setup to suit their needs. Constructed from Type 3 hard-coat anodized aluminum, the handguard exhibits exceptional durability. Additionally, the inclusion of multiple QD sling sockets enhances the LC charger's versatility and facilitates different carrying options. The package also provides an ambidextrous magazine button, an M LOK QD sling socket, a hand stop, and a hex wrench for disassembly. As far as safety, Ruger has implemented several features to ensure user peace of mind. These include a 1911 style ambidextrous manual safety, an integrated trigger safety, a neutrally balanced sear with significant engagement and strong spring tension, and a hammer catch that prevents the hammer from contacting the firing pin unless the trigger is pulled. With these safety measures in place, the LC Charger provides a reliable and secure shooting experience. An added advantage of the LC Charger is its compatibility with Ruger 5.7 pistol magazines. This compatibility allows users to utilize the same magazines and ergonomic controls as the Ruger 5.7 pistol, which means if you own a Ruger 5.7 pistol, you should really consider getting the LC Charger. So, now that we're done with all the technical details, the LC Charger doesn't look like something to write home about, does it? Nope. At least, not to me. Personally, I don't see a use for it. But I know some of you might be interested. Maybe you're asking yourself, what's it for? While I may not personally have a need for it, I don't think the Ruger LC Charger is useless by any means. In fact, like I said earlier, I think it can serve as a fantastic makeshift MP7. Ruger has taken a clever approach by introducing both the LC Charger Carbine and the LC Carbine in a pistol configuration. This allows users to SBR it. In so doing, you essentially create a poor man's MP7 chambered in 5.7 by 28 mm, as the LC Charger is significantly more affordable compared to the MP7. The key distinction between the LC Charger and the LC Carbine lies in their features. The LC Charger lacks a stock and features a 10-inch barrel whereas the LC Carbine has a 16-inch barrel and a longer handrail of approximately 4.5 inches. However, apart from these differences, most other aspects remain unchanged. The LC Charger retains the number 50 charging handle, complete ambidextrous controls, including the option to switch the magazine release to the opposite side, the same trigger, a 20-round magazine capacity, and a similar safety lever. Additionally, both models feature a full-length top rail system, albeit in a shortened version on the LC Charger due to the barrel length. In essence, the LC Charger is essentially the same firearm, but in a smaller and more compact form, which is its main draw. I understand that some individuals may be hesitant to pay the $200 fee to the ATF just to SBR the damn thing, but shooting the LC Charger without a stock looks silly, and with the ATF's current pistol brace rule in effect, you can't use a pistol brace to stabilize it. It is possible to still stabilize it by attaching a bungee sling and shoot it one-handed by punching it out or using two hands to stabilize the firearm. The LC Charger has light recoil, making it manageable for one-handed shooting. Although it can be done, it may appear somewhat silly. Should you SBR it? On the other hand, if you are willing to pay the $200 to SBR the LC Charger, whether you choose to do so or not is entirely up to you. By doing so, you could essentially create a slightly improved civilian version of the MP7, assuming H&K ever releases a civilian variant. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't pay the ATF $200 to SBR the damn thing. It's totally up to you. But if the concept sounds appealing and you are willing to pay the ATF that $200, you can basically create a slightly better civilian version of the MP7 for much, much less. Now, whether or not the 5.7 round is viable for self-defense is a subject of contention. Some argue that it is not an effective self-defense round, while others claim it sucks at it. You can find videos, blog posts, and studies supporting both viewpoints. However, personally, 
I don't place excessive emphasis on the self-defense capabilities of the 5.7 as some people do. In my view, any bullet traveling at high velocity can potentially be a self-defense round. The effectiveness of a self-defense round depends on how it compares to other rounds in terms of performance. I appreciate the concept of the 5.7 round, particularly the fact that it involves a small yet extremely fast-moving bullet. This characteristic offers the potential to penetrate certain types of barriers that other rounds may struggle with, depending on the specific version of the 5.7 round being used. The concept of customizing this item with various attachments is appealing. You can add a light and a laser to enhance its functionality. With the threaded barrel, you'll be able to use a suppressor as well. Just imagine how amazing this item would look with a stock, a light, a laser, a grip, and a suppressor. Moreover, you can consider adding a different hand stop for a tighter grip. With a collapsible stock, this item is incredibly compact and provides a shooting experience that surpasses any 9mm PCC in terms of recoil. There's just a lot of gutchifying you can do to, to enhance this gun. We give Ruger mad props for the LC charger. In today's society, firearms often face negative perceptions, and it is understandable why that is the case. I am aware that some individuals misuse firearms. However, this doesn't mean we should allow anti-gun advocates to strip us of our right to bear arms. If you find enjoyment in visiting shooting ranges and customizing firearms, while also acknowledging their role as effective tools for personal defense, then the LC Charger emerges as a fantastic alternative to other available pistol-caliber carbines on the market. Firearms, for me, serve the dual purpose of providing enjoyment and ensuring personal protection. This firearm brings back a sense of joy and fun that has been somewhat lacking lately due to the prevailing negative narrative surrounding firearms. Additionally, the 5.7 round, while subject to debate regarding its effectiveness as a defensive round, is undeniably enjoyable and easy to shoot. I find the ambiguity surrounding its classification appealing, as it allows me to customize and use the firearm in any way I desire, without feeling restricted by predefined categories. A PCC chambered in 9mm may be too much for people who are recoil-shy. If you're one such individual, a compact firearm like the LC Charger offers superior stopping power compared to a carbine in 22 LR or even a 22 Magnum. Whether in its stock configuration or with a brace, I think the LC Charger is unmatched. But we're curious to know what you think, so sound it off in the comments. Please like, share, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon too for more of these videos. Thanks for watching.